Welcome to Brooklyn Community Pride Center and the first episode of Queer BK Chat. On a regular basis, we'll be discussing current and interesting topics pertaining to the LGBTQ community with invited guests. Today, we're talking about physical health and fitness and why it is so important to have LGBTQ plus affirming spaces for your weekly iron pumping, ball play, dance, or other activities that will make your sweat glands do their work. We hear from a lot of people that it is hard to find an LGBTQ plus affirming space for exercise or fitness, especially for trans and non-binary people. And I want to find more out about that. I decided to join a class today, Trans Collective Boxing Course, because it's people that like my body and not like my body. And you know, you want to be able to work out and you know feel free and feel comfortable. And I was able to you know feel comfortable and free and I had a blast here in Brooklyn. So here at the Brooklyn Community Pride Center with the Trans Boxing Collective, I learned that I could fight anyone that ain't nobody in my way and nobody can stand in front of me. That I am perfect just the way I am and I dare anyone to step up to me and let me know any wise. Exhale. I was looking for LGBTQ friendly spaces and I found Brooklyn Pride Center. I typically just did YouTube yoga <laughs> before I came to the class. So. It was a good experience being able to do yoga in an actual class. I don't think if the yoga class wasn't at the center, I would step foot in it. Being an African-American male and being queer, I think it's difficult. Anytime you always have to think about your environment and where you're going and who's gonna be there and how they're gonna perceive you. Being at a place here where I know I'm affirmed and um, validated for who I am, I think it's important. Our guest today is Kirsten Adorian, who facilitates a weekly yoga class on Sundays here at Brooklyn Community Pride Center. Welcome to Queer BK Chat, Kirsten. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Can you tell me a little bit more about yourself? Where are you from? How long have you been in New York? What did, what did get you into yoga? Sure. I grew up in Queens, New York, uh, and I moved to Brooklyn about 12 years ago. Uh, got into yoga mostly in high school. A theater teacher taught us how to stretch and how to do yoga, and I remember thinking it was wild because I had never learned to like consciously breathe before or be aware of my body in that way. And then I continued doing it in high school and college and found that it helped me with a lot of things, mostly with depression. But then as I got older and I developed some sciatica and chronic pain stuff, it was the only thing to really relieve some of that. And it's helped me in so many other ways that I could expand upon, but for the most part, it started as mental health and exercise and then became also about like sustaining my body as mm -hmm. I age. Wow, well, yeah. yeah. I remember like I did yoga, the first time I did yoga, I always thought like it looks so it looks so relaxing and so easy. And then the first time <laughs> I did it, I was exhausted yeah. at the end. It's really very intense, right? Yeah, well it can be. And and what I love about yoga is that it teaches you to accept challenge but also to, but over a long-term period. And, and things that you always hear yoga teachers say and that I'm always talking about is the fact that, you know, one week you'll have a wonderful practice and you'll be so happy and elated. And then the next week you'll have a horrible practice and the poses that you did before you can't do anymore, or maybe there's something that feels like it's changing. And I think that there's much larger implications for life and how to handle life in that, that, right. that everything's always changing and that you learn to accept a certain amount of challenge and change within that. So to me, that's really like beautiful about yoga is you get to play with your body and play with your capacity to do things. Why do you think it's important that queer folk have dedicated spaces to do exercise yoga or otherwise? Queer and trans folk and anybody with an LGBT community uh, we are often centering our experiences and our identities around our bodies. Um, what happens in our bodies, what our bodies mean to the world, how they flag. Um, so I think that of all people, like it's very important for queer, trans, LGBTQ to have opportunities to work with our bodies. I think the other thing is, is that, you know, especially at Brooklyn Pride Center, 
We have folks being able to access a program that is often intimidating to a lot of people, especially in studio spaces where you're paying money, where there's a conception of yoga as now belonging to white, thin, um, usually cis women, um, and being very heavily commodified and also exotified. And for those reasons, it really often doesn't appeal to a lot of people or it scares a lot of people away. So having it in this space where I'm often trying to make it as accessible as possible, not pretentious at all, and then trying to respect the, the lineage of the practice, but also recognizing the contemporary use of it, um, means I hope that like people will feel more comfortable trying it that wouldn't otherwise. I really hope the impact is to teach people skills to navigate the world um, and how to like emotionally regulate in a world that can often feel really violent and antagonistic to them. But uh, I know that a lot of people within the class that are regulars are often working with injuries or strain in their bodies. I personally have sciatica, a few other students have like lower back pain. So a lot of the time I'm focusing on poses that feel accessible to people who have like some kind of chronic pain or um, injury that they're working with. So I, I hope that it's helping with those things. Yeah, I think it's a very beautiful the way you said that really to, to learn people or that people take away how to also better deal with life. So it's not necessarily just to learn, teach them yoga skills, but it's way more than that, right? Yeah, I, I, would love the, I would love it if people felt nourished and sustained by the practice that we're doing. Right, right. And um, you were talking, uh, earlier we were talking also about, about body image, right? For the LGBTQ community, it's so important. A body image is very central oftentimes, right? In the LGBTQ community, uh, more so perhaps even than in a straight world. Um, and what I like about the class here uh, on Sundays is that you see all kinds of shapes, right? You see everybody, right? It's, yeah. it's not just cis, white, skinny women, right? That yeah, are in the thankfully. space, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's and a beautiful thing. It's wonderful. And, yeah. and I, I love it because I, I try to focus on the idea that this is, that everything's an invitation and everything's open to modification. Nothing is prescribed. Nothing should look like a specific shape. People have ideas about yoga as looking like specific shapes necessarily. I try to at least address that and, and hope to encourage people not to aim for that as much. Wonderful. The other thing is that we also hear that other spaces are not so much inclusive of LGBT, LGBTQ folks, right? It can be the reason you wanna be perhaps with other LGBTQ folks in an exercise space. Can you say a little bit about that? Well, to start with, before I even address like gender and sexuality, there's there's definitely a racial implication to a lot of studios. Um, and that I think is the first thing that maybe throws people off, especially people of color. Um, and I shouldn't speak for people of color, but from what I've been told and what I understand, um, there's a centering of whiteness in a way that erases the way that the practice was developed and also erases other people doing it that aren't white. So that's first of all. Um, Second of all, I think that there's a lot of gendered language that just gets thrown around um, within studio spaces. Often just because the teachers themselves are not queer, they're not gender, non-conforming, they're not, they're not gay, they're just they're often straight and cis. Um, so that's another thing. Or maybe they even just assume their audience is straight and cis. Um, so that's another thing. And then I think in terms of just having, having no space for trans or non-binary folks to change, having no space for trans or non-binary people to practice in a way that doesn't feel like their body is being focused on or even gendered. Um, I think that's something that people run into a lot. Anything else you want to add? No, I'm really grateful to be able to teach here every Sunday. I feel like I end up telling the class every day, every time I'm there, I'm like, I missed, I missed you this week. Like, I, I just feel so grateful to be able to teach here and to do this practice with people. Um, yeah, and, every, and for everyone who shows up. Well, thank you so much for this wonderful conversation, Kirsten. Thank you, Jakob. So this was our conversation with Kirsten Adorian, who teaches yoga every Sunday here at Brooklyn Community Pride Center from 11 to 12. Thank you so much. This was our first episode of Queer BK Chat. We'll see you next time. <laughs>